Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss our team's favorite grooming products that we've used for years, and this video is 100% not sponsored. We just like these products, we've used them, and we pay for them with our own money. If you're at a drugstore, you can find tons of grooming products, especially for men. And in recent years, more and more brands have entered the market. So testing out different things can be rather costly. Because of that, Preston, Kyle and I thought, why not share what we've been using and testing over the years so you don't have to go out there and waste your money on stuff that doesn't work. Of course, a lot comes down to personal preference, but you'll be the judge of that. Personally, I don't use a whole lot of grooming products, so you won't find me having 56 different facial lotions because that's just not me. That also means that I don't have a favorite shampoo, for example, even though recently I've experimented with different things that contained tea tree oil and I like the smell of that. But overall, I'm a very low maintenance grooming product kind of guy. Teresa, on the other hand, is big into skincare. And so I've picked up a few things here or there. One of the products I've been using the longest is the Got To Be Spike Glue. And it's a bit embarrassing because it's a drugstore brand. I think initially it cost anywhere from like three to five dollars. I've tried many different things for my hair. And if you check out this video, you can see what it looks like without a product. And this Got To Be Glue is pretty much the only thing that can tame my hair and keep a look throughout the day. Other stuff like pomada I put in my hair and it just creates some curls over the course of the day. So with the Got To Be, I typically apply it after I wash and dry my hair with a towel. Then I use a comb and then I use a hair blow dryer to fix it to my scalp in the way I like it. It's pretty hard that way and I can even sleep on it, honestly. Frankly, I'd like to use a more high quality product. I just haven't found anything with the same hold. People keep recommending stuff to me and I try it and it just doesn't work. Now, when it comes to shaving products, I have a few more options here. I've been using feather blades for years because they're the sharpest and have very thick, curly facial hair. I've tried all the razors and so I have like one blade, for example, that uses the feather blades, but typically I use a double edge razor with feather blades. Depending on how many you buy, they cost about 20 cents a piece, which sounds like a lot, but typically I get two to four shaves out of them, which brings the cost per shave way down. Compared to cartridge razors like Gillette, it's like night and day, because this is actually sharp and cuts my hair. I don't get skin irritation, it doesn't pull on my hair. So if you want to learn more about the nine biggest shaving mistakes, please check out this video here. I typically use those feather blades in combination with the Merkur Slant Razor. It's a product from Germany, costs about $55. I've had mine for years. It's a great product and because of the slant, it gives you a much more aggressive cutting angle even if you pull straight down. Now, if you have very sensitive skin or thin hair, you may not need that. I find for my hair, it works very well. I get a super quick shave in a very short amount of time, adding an electric shaver. I have two electric shavers. They're waterproof. One is from Brown, one is from Philips. I like the Philips more. I also have a bunch of shaving brushes and the Lyle Grade are really superior to anything else. But when push comes to shove, oftentimes I just use my hand because I wanna save time and I don't have that in the morning. So instead of using a traditional shaving soap that needs to be lathered up, I use a soft shaving cream over the top from Truefit and Hill, which is fragrance free and unscented. I like it because it's very gentle, it has a high glycerin content, so it protects my skin from the sharp blades and it's easy to use and quick. In terms of body products, one of the things I found in recent years that I really like is Jehovah oil. The winters here in Minnesota can get really long and they're dry and that's hard on your skin. So I typically get very flaky skin. It almost looks like a crater or like death welly. And adding jojoba oil really helps to moisturize my skin, not just the day off, but also the second day. Typically I use it in combination with a lotion because on its own, it can leave your skin quite greasy, especially after you just apply it. Despite the fact that it's an oil, it really soaks up into my skin and it leaves it moisturized, flexible, and just beautiful when I look at it. Hands down, it's better at retaining moisture than any other lotion I've ever used. On top of that, it's naturally antimicrobial and it also helps prevent acne. So it doesn't clog your pores and is this highly recommended. 
It also helps with something called Keratoris pilaris, which is also known as chicken skin, which I suffer from when it gets really dry outside in the winter. You can buy jojoba oil online or your local co-op. It's widely available and pretty affordable. If you're not sure about it, you can go to Target and you can find small bottles of two ounces for like three bucks. Of course, you can also buy the larger bottles once you know you like it. When I travel, I usually don't bring oil with me because if the bottle breaks, it's a huge mess. So I typically bring this First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream Hydration Lotion. I know it's a long name, but I found that it's actually a very nice lotion that's quite moisturizing. If you want an all-in-one product, it's great because it contains colloidal oatmeal, which is great for red, irritated, or dry skin. Growing up, the only kind of soap I used in the shower was a shower gel because that's what my dad bought and that's just what we had. In recent years, I've really come to appreciate bar soaps and I've thrown out any kind of shower gel. And even if I travel, I bring little bar soaps because I much prefer how they feel on my skin and how they work. No, I'm not talking about Dev bar soaps, but quality triple milled soaps. By the way, what does that mean? Well, when soap is made, you have soap and you have fragrances and other ingredients, and they go through a milling machine, which is made out of stainless steel rollers. And while it primarily helps to distribute the ingredients in the soap evenly, it also squeezes out water from the soap, which means it will last longer when you use it. Most quality soaps that are called triple milled may be milled more often, but what matters is that the soap is not too dry and not too soft, so it lasts for a long time and keeps your skin moisturized and it's not drying it out. Compared to shower gels and body wash, bar soap is better in so many ways. Basically, body wash is just a liquid soap, so you pay for the addition of water. In essence, bar soap is better for your skin, it lasts much longer, and it's a lot cheaper. If you have sensitive skin, get something that says fragrance-free, because unscented is in fact sometimes a scent that just makes it smell like there's no scent in it. I like natural scents such as Verbena, which has a bit of a flavor of lemongrass. Some of my favorite brands include Pré de Provence or L'Occitane, but frankly, I try any kind of quality bar soap that is hard and has a good amount of fat. I always try to stay clear of any kind of parabens and phthalates, which are typically in body washes or shower gels, but not in bar soaps. So that's it for my list. Let's throw it over to Preston and see what he uses on a regular basis. Similarly to Raphael, I also don't use a large number of grooming products. Rather, when the need arises, I will do a lot of initial research first to make sure that I'm making an informed decision. If I find that a chosen product isn't giving me my desired results, I'll make a change. But all of the products that I'm listing here today have either been part of my repertoire for a long while, or I've been using them recently and have been very pleased with the results I'm seeing. First, we'll cover hair products. As I've mentioned in a number of other videos, my hair product of choice for a long time now has been Groom and Clean by Suave, which is in turn a division of Unilever. I appreciate that it gives my hair a high amount of shine, in line with my 1930s-esque hairstyle, and a moderate amount of hold. But more on that in my next product. Equally important to me, however, is the fact that this product washes out in the shower with a standard amount of shampoo and just one rinse. Stronger oil or wax-based products can sometimes take more aggressive cleaning to get out of the hair. The fragrance of the product is certainly unique, and I think it's a bit reminiscent of something like pumpkin spice. It may be an irritant to some people, according to the Environmental Working Group's cosmetics database, but I've had no issues with it, and I've been using Groom & Clean for about seven years now. On a similar note, Groom & Clean gets its hold and shine properties principally from mineral oil and lanolin, which is a natural compound secreted by sheep to strengthen their wool. This can be an allergen for some people, so do a bit of research to see if Groom & Clean is right for you or not. You should be able to find it at most chain drugstores, although my local Walgreens no longer carries it, and it usually sells for about $5 to $6 a tube. As I mentioned, the one aspect of Groom & Clean that isn't 100% ideal for me is that I do wish its hold could be a bit stronger. At the same time, a stronger hold would probably correspond with the product being harder to wash out. As such, I supplement my hair routine by using a little bit of hairspray. 
The product I've chosen for a number of years now is Consort for Men. The product is marketed as being unscented, however it will still smell a bit like any standard hairspray when first applied, though this will dissipate after a minute or two. Consort is available in both aerosol and non-aerosol styles. While I've been using the brand for about six years, I've been using the non-aerosol pump style for the better part of about three years now, as I find that it allows me to better target specific areas of my hair and that the container lasts longer overall. The company offers multiple hold strengths, but I've found extra hold to be the most commonly available. You can typically pick it up for about five to six dollars per unit. Moving on now to shaving products, if you've seen our video on shaving mistakes, you know that using a high fat shaving cream and one that doesn't come from an aerosol can is critical to achieving a smooth and close shave. My shaving cream of choice for about six years now has been from the Italian brand ProRosso. While I've tried their white formulation for sensitive skin, in fact that's the tube I'm working my way through right now, I've found that their original green formulation with eucalyptus oil and menthol is the one that leaves me feeling the most smooth and fresh. As such, after I finish this current white tube, I'll be switching back to the green line. ProRosso also offers a red line for coarse hair and a blue line with a particular emphasis on moisturization. Most of these lines include pre-shave products, shaving soaps and creams, and aftershaves. I've only ever tried these shaving creams from a tube, but I may experiment with their other offerings in the future. When whipped up with a brush in a mug, the ProRosso cream lathers easily and applies smoothly, doing a good job of lifting the hairs and invigorating the skin. A 5.2 ounce tube is available online for around $10 and typically lasts me for about a year, keeping in mind that I only shave about one to three times per week currently. Like Raphael, I also use a traditional safety razor to shave, along with an electric shaver from Philips Norelco, and also like Raphael, my favorite model is from Mercure. Specifically, I use the Futur MK23C, which has a longer handle for greater precision. This one cost me around $40, and it's been going strong for six years and counting with no issues. Because my skin is more sensitive than Raphael's, and because my hair isn't as coarse, feather razor blades would probably be too aggressive for my needs. As such, I use another brand, Astra, which we've previously covered as a good pick for men who want a sharp but not aggressive blade good for sensitive skin. I bought a box of 100 platinum blades, in other words, 20 smaller boxes of five blades each, in 2014, and I still haven't worked my way through all of the blades yet. A single blade can sometimes last me up to five shaves, and while the occasional nick does occur, I do like overall the results that these blades give me. Speaking of nicks, my product to treat them since I began shaving traditionally has been a styptic pencil from Pinot Clubman. A styptic is designed to constrict tissues and blood vessels and to promote coagulation in order to stop bleeding. The active ingredient in most styptic pencils, including Clubman's, is anhydrous aluminum sulfate. Of course, we wouldn't recommend eating it, but you don't have to worry about applying it to your face and neck after shaving, as this is a compound that is often used in many medicines and water treatments. A styptic pencil can be used to target specific nicks, or it can be run across the skin lengthwise, similar to how one might use something like an alum block after shaving, and this is a technique that I use. You'll probably be able to find the pencil that's one third of an ounce on sale at most drugstores for around $2.50, but an even better value is the one ounce jumbo size, which is often being sold for not much more and is therefore a better value per ounce in addition to lasting longer. While ProRosso's white shaving cream hasn't been my favorite, I do still have sensitive skin and therefore need to use a product that will soothe it after I'm done shaving. In order to avoid excess irritation, Nivea's Sensitive Post Shave Balm has been a pick of mine for about five years now. 
With vitamin E, chamomile, and witch hazel extracts, it does a good job of soothing my skin when I'm done shaving. Although I don't think he mentioned it in this video, I think it's a favorite of Raphael's as well. A 3.3 ounce bottle will set you back about $5 if you buy online, and I find that I go through a bottle about every six months or so. Moving on to body products, I'll next mention the Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Lotion. This lotion has been a staple in my household for as long as I can remember. It's fragrance-free, and its use of colloidal oatmeal, which is standard for Aveeno, helps to make sure that skin is moisturized. By the way, the name of the company comes from the scientific name for the common oat, Avena sativa. It's no wonder that almost all of their products, then, contain colloidal oatmeal. I use this lotion on dry skin, scrapes and abrasions, bug bites, and even sometimes on my neck after shaving if it's feeling particularly sensitive. In other words, it's good for a wide range of applications. 18 fluid ounces will set you back about $9 online. I've got one more product today that I'll list as a sort of honorable mention. I don't think it can really qualify as a true favorite yet, because I haven't been using it for long, but I have liked the results I've been seeing. The product is Seabreeze, and it's an astringent, in other words, a tissue constrictor, that works to clear the skin of dirt and oil, as well as to soften it. While it does contain some alcohol, which can be excessively drying in products like Aftershave, and some people might be sensitive to the fragrance, I find that the glycerin, camphor, and clove and eucalyptus oils do a great job of soothing and moisturizing my skin, and of keeping bacteria away. Actually, my father has been using Seabreeze for a number of years, switching over at some point from the original formulation to the one for sensitive skin, and on a recommendation from him to start using it to minimize razor bumps, I've liked the results I've seen. As such, I use it after shaving, just before applying the aforementioned Nivea Balm, and sometimes I'll also use it after washing my face before bed. As with Groom & Clean, I don't have any sensitivity to the fragrance in Seabreeze, and in fact, I quite like the clean, fresh scent that it has. A 10-ounce bottle is typically available for around $8. So, that wraps up my list, now let's toss it over to Kyle for his picks. Now to round out this video, here are a few of my favorite picks. Now my grooming and product philosophy is that I will try absolutely anything. I enjoy experimenting, although I do prefer my products to usually be much more natural. Now I've been using most of these favorite products on this list for a few years now. now the first category we're going to look at is face products. I've recently been using a charcoal cleanser by a brand called Lumen. The most important aspect of a cleanser that I like to look for is that I'm able to feel clean immediately after I use it. This is something that I haven't always been able to find when using other brands. I've been enjoying using this every day because it doesn't leave that weird film-like residue on my face that other cleansers have left. The activated charcoal in this product helps to draw out impurities and remove dead skin cells. Lumen is a newer boutique brand that is currently only available online. Once I've cleansed my face, I enjoy using a good quality moisturizer. The one I've been using for a couple of years now happens to be from a brand called Kiehl's. I happen to have combination skin on my face. Now this means that I'm dealing with both oily skin and dry skin at the same time. I need to find a product that helps balance out those oil levels. That's why I like to use the brand Kiehl's. I really love this moisturizer. It works all day long while I'm at work. It prevents me from looking greasy and oily, but also doesn't leave me looking dry. Now next, we're gonna talk about the things I like to use for beard and facial hair. Now I happen to be using a really good quality beard wash and conditioner that I happen to find from Art of Shaving. Combining the utilization of both of these tools in the morning has helped ensure that my beard is always looking soft and feeling extremely comfortable, not too itchy on my face. Next, I like to use a really good quality beard balm. And what a difference this has made. Initially, I would always use beard oil and my comb just to get myself ready, but the problem with that over time was that I realized that I would start to lose the shine in my beard, and sometimes my beard would start feeling a little bit too itchy. Now, using the beard balm with a really good quality beard brush has been phenomenal. It helps keep my beard in line so that no stray hairs are falling all over the place, and helps ensure that things are soft and comfortable throughout the day, not itchy. Now, the next topic we're going to cover are my favorite body products to use. Now, for my hands, I really have been enjoying using the Kiehl's Hand Salve. 
It's an inexpensive product that works wonders. I found mine for around $20, but it locks in moisture and keeps you extremely soft and comfortable when shaking people's hands throughout the day. Now for body lotion, I've really been enjoying using the Aveeno body lotion. This is something that keeps moisture locked in very nicely. I don't feel too oily. And who wants to have dry skin anyway? You wanna make sure that your skin looks great all day long. Keeping a small bottle of lotion like this in my gym bag, at work, or even in my travel bag when flying helps ensure that when I'm out and about, I don't get mistaken for some kind of an elephant. Now, one of the last things I'll cover is one of my favorite fragrances. Now, I don't happen to wear fragrance every single day, but I do wear them frequently. One of my favorite fragrances to be using is the Hugo Boss Unlimited scent. I really enjoy long-lasting scents that will last throughout my workday. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I am a very big fan of fragrances, and I usually tend to go for things that have a lot of pine or citrus or warm notes to them. The Hugo Boss Unlimited scent has been one of my favorites for a number of years now. I love how it always makes me feel clean and fresh. The top notes in the scent are mint, grapefruit, and violet leaves. Now, by the way, for more information on our fragrance-related topics, check out our playlist here. Now, that wraps up my list. Let's head back to Raphael to wrap up this video. So that's it. These are our favorite grooming products. Please share with us in the comments products that you like because we'd like to test them and maybe we'll switch things around and add them to our rotation. If that's the case, of course, we'll make another video for you.